Good afternoon. First of all, uh, let me congratulate Dr. Karad for such a wonderful organization being set up in Goa. It was very enlightening. Also, it's a delight to be amidst you. Youth Parliament is a very noble concept and I'm sure it's going to mature in Goa. They train the aspiring political class, especially the students, and that's what was much needed. Goa at 60, I also salute all those freedom fighters and Goans who fought for the liberation of Goa. And needless to say, since it is 60 years, when they were fighting for liberation, they were also youth, and I must pay my warm regards, my uh, gratitude to them for their sacrifice. They liberated Goa, handed over to Go uh, beautiful Goa. It's our time to shape it up, take it forward, and it's your time to lead it in future. So and I'm sure you're going to do that very well. I was really inspired and amazed with the speech of the Honorable Chief Minister. Is an outstanding person among, I work very closely with many chief ministers. And today I've come across a person who is very vibrant, very, very dynamic. I have seen him very closely. I've seen his partition, her partition, because it's very straight and exactly his pattern of work also is very straight. So very adorable personality and I'm sure he is going to emerge victorious in the forthcoming election. And I can assure you, Goa will be on a very high fast track. He is an outstanding personality. I adore him personally as well. So the topic given to us was learning from the past and future ahead. So I'll just take you for two, three minutes on the past. What did Goa achieve? which are the significant events which led to a transformation of Goa. Of course, the liberation movement, then Goa was more of an agrarian economy with mining as a base. But real brand Goa started when Indira Gandhi ji hosted Chogam in Goa. Chogam gave a recognition to the state of Goa. And that is where first spark towards tourism started taking place and uh, Goa started emerging as a qualitative tourist destination. And that is where everyone started shifting Goa's economy from mining on agrarian base to tourism base. Post that, a lot of influx started coming. Goa came out with a tourism policy. Hotel lobby started looking out for Goa. But in 1992, the second major event that happened was Goa was given special incentives by central governments, thanks to our uh, past president of Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Ramnar Kare, who took a very strong delegation to government and convinced them to give income tax exemption. Goa government responded with sales tax exemption. Coupled with these exemptions and a very dynamic approach, Goa got sufficiently industrialized with top class manufacturing units getting into the state. So, Primary sector caught up, tertiary sector also developed, and the secondary sector also got a, a flip, and that's where the development started. But all this was not enough. Then to emerge from a base level tourism to a high-end tourism, actually it was late Chief Minister Mr. Manohar Parikar who got IFI into the state of Goa. So IFI created brand Goa for the world, and that is where Goa got transformed. I must compliment two people here. While it was uh, Honorable uh, Chief Minister Manor Parikar that time, but it was equally Yatin Kakodkar, who was grandson of our first Chief Minister, Dhanan Bandodkar, who was chairman of Goa CII, who actually uh, took a lead from CII side and proposed Ifi to Manor Bai, and then they took it forward. So this is where Goa got transformed then the Lucifer Games happened, and so many other activities happened, which actually took Goa to a very new level. 
we have we are rated as one of the best today one of the best destination for uh, second home one of the best to destination from tourism perspective very qualitative manufacturing uh, zone lot of we produce almost 10% of pharma products from goa but at the same time two major or two three major things happen in goa one was the environmental impact there was an impact on the environment there was an impact on the demography the migration uh, did change to some extent the structure of goa and third is the little political discomfort that happened the political profile of the state started changing the local area everyone started uh, managing uh, corruption did increase over a period of 20 years but it was not actually more of a top down driven but it was down to top from panchayats and all uh, started creating little bit of uh, nuisance i think that has to change so and last year of course covid created a major impact on the state but what is the future if you look at entire india one of the state which is having a very good future is goa what is happening in the world today today two things are happening which india is watching very closely one one is the changing global political order india versus china or the entire world versus china or the europe japan or uh, uh, us all those versus china so this is going to create an immense opportunity for india india was signatory to various free trade agreements in the past now that went against us but today same thing is going to be a immense opportunity for us in terms of market access america and other developed countries have realized the fault and error of promoting china in the past so they realize that if at all the trade balance and the global trade balance and the global strategic balance has to be maintained india has to also be supported and india has to emerge as one of the strong countries and today for the first time thanks to the leadership of honorable prime minister who could give a very robust leadership to the country that has built up the confidence in the global leaders that india is the only country which can create and maintain a balance in the asia pacific region and i think this is where we need to watch from the as a youth you need to look at the opportunities that will come out of it now i'll tell you the second thing don't be lazy and evasive about future future is going to be very faster than what you think it's not going to be a process which will come to you at its own time it's coming very fast earlier things is to change the world is getting converged technology is going to be a dominant player even my friends rinivas dempo just now talked about it technology is going to be a dominant player today world had challenges today 6 d's are going to be very important technology is going to create disruption it's going to be deceptive it's going to dematerialize is going to demonetize look at uber look at ola look at all those amazon and all they are all demonetization models which are happening in the system democratization the way technology is penetrating it is getting spread at a very faster rate then it is going to be digitized so this is the way the 6d's are going to play dematerializing is happening in a very fast way look at uh, 15 years back you need to have a stereo you need to have a speaker you need to have a phone you need to have a music system you have to have so many thing camera today everything is coming on one small piece that's a dematerialization that's happening so with this thing what are we going to face convergence dematerialization 6d's are going to change the world technology is going to bring scarcity into abundance look at what is happening in solar technology the dependence on power is going to go low uh, oil is going to go low for power or energy is going to get into technology center uh, storageable power lithium based or even solar 
is going to be the in thing. The cost of power is going to come down drastically low. It won't be a surprise that in next six months or a year latest, India is going to get into a massive solar engagement program. And I am told one of the top business house is negotiating with some of the global companies to give even power at two rupees in India. So imagine the disruption that will happen in the country. So when all these things happen, look at the internet penetration. We are going to a regime of 5G. Five, with 2G, 3G, 4G had a speed of around uh, hardly 100 Mbps. Today with 5G, the speed is going to be somewhere around 10 giga. With 10 giga, the entire world will change. Look at the internet penetration, internet users in the world. Today we have around 4 billion internet users. By 2030, 2030 it's going to be around uh, 8 billion. The moment is internet user go to 8 billion, the way entire world things will change. They will rediscover, they will reinvent, they will uh, revitalize. So entire system will change. And I think we need to be part of this. I'll just take two minutes more. Coming to Goa, what do we do? We need to be part of this beneficiary system. Goa is going to be very soon connected to the national highway structure. Gurgaon to Bombay, highway will be ready in two years' time. Bombay to Kanyakumari, six-lane road is almost getting ready in another six to eight months' time. That means we will be part of the north-west-south corridor. Once these corridors are getting built, entire profile of tourism will change. You will have uh, motorist tourists, so many other tourists flocking Goa very easily. You will have a lot of uh, logistics movement happening. Goa will become a very strategic logistic hub. Goa will become a very powerful uh, center for technology. So here we should build, believe in Swayampurna Goa and try to work and focus on blue economy of Goa, that is marine based, green economy. Green economy has a lot of potential in Goa. We need to introduce agrotech, build a convergence between agrotech, agro and technology, and create a lot of opportunities for the Goans. As a youth, you must start watching all these things. And third is white revolution, from a poultry to meat, everything, and you can cater to the rest of the country. 60 to 80 percent of GDP can be addressed from state of Goa. I mean, contribution of 5 to 6 percent to the national GDP can come to Goa only by way of applying the new youth power. Lot more to talk, but uh, I think there is a shortage of time. Uh, only thing we must protect in Goa is environment. We should be very careful and fight against corruption. I would uh, also request you all to watch on Sindhudurg, the way it's coming up, it's going to be an opportunity and equally a threat if we don't address it well. So I wish you all the best. Thanks for your patient hearing. I look forward to connecting with you all again. Thank you.